May I have your attention, please? <laughs> It's Marker's Monsters Halloween 2017. <laughs> Welcome back to Markers and Monsters, where, hey guys, it's Friday, but not just any Friday, it's Folklore Friday. This is another one I was very much anticipating, as I'm a huge fan of folklore and urban legends and tall tales and things like that. I luckily live in a region that is uh, very rife with them. I live, well, let's say the Pittsburgh area, for anybody that... Uh, you know, is from out of town, doesn't know. Uh, you can look that up on a map, but the Pittsburgh region, western Pennsylvania, uh, we got lots of legends and local lore on here, and I'm sure every place kind of does. Um, however, there's something special for me about the, the local stuff. I love it. And today's drawing, uh, we're a little bit north of Pittsburgh. We're up in Erie, Pennsylvania, where specifically Lake Erie, one of the five great lakes of the United States, uh, that's where Pennsylvania meets Lake Erie. We have a town there called Erie. Surprise, surprise. And in that town, there is an isle, Presque Isle. It's a beautiful nature preserve. Highly recommend going there. Um, miles of, of lakeshore, beautiful uh, little beaches there. Uh, a cool lighthouse, a couple of them, actually. Uh, great nature and scenery. But... There is a darker side to Presque Isle, for underneath the waves, deep in Lake Erie, is said to live the Storm Hag, or Jenny Greenteeth, as she is allegedly called. Uh, this individual, <coughs> kind of like a siren, comes out of the water, bringing with her terrible storms, and can lure sailors and unwary people uh, down to their doom in the uh icy waters underneath the crashing waves. So that's pretty great. Uh, when I learned about this legend, I, I knew I had to draw her and uh, I had a ton of fun doing it. So let's take a look here. As you can see, uh, Jenny Greenteeth has green teeth. They're apparently very sharp and she's got bright, brilliant eyes like a cat's eye that uh, in the darkness of a storm or at night, uh, can look like a beacon to a ship, but nope, it's just her ready to kill and, and render and all that terrible stuff. She's got long, long, sharp fingernails. I drew them here as being yellow and kind of rotty looking, uh, able to rend flesh from bone and all that stuff. So I had a ton of fun making this drawing. Uh, I gave her wild hair, kind of like sea swept and, and waterlogged. Uh, keeping with the green theme, she said to have pale green skin. So I gave her a green dress as well, almost like, uh, blending in with the waters to an extent. And as you can see now, I'm putting in some crashing storm waves behind her. There'll be a terrific storm brewing overhead. Um, it was an interesting challenge to add in, uh, this much detail in the background. I try to always get better drawing, uh, seascapes and stuff like that, but I need more practice. So that was another reason I decided to go this, uh, this route. Same with the roiling clouds up top. I'll also be putting in, in the background, uh, near the bottom, you'll see it here in a minute, is the Presque Isle Lighthouse, which is a very pretty lighthouse, I have to say. It's an interesting look as it is a square tower instead of the... Pardon me, typical, uh, um, almost conical tower that you normally see. But, anywho, I think the drawing is coming along very nicely. Now, one thing about old Jenny Greenteeth that I found very interesting is there is like a nursery rhyme associated with her. It's said that if a storm brews up on Lake Erie, you have to listen and see if you can hear this song being sung behind the howling winds. And it goes like this. Come into the water, love, dance beneath the waves, where dwell the bones of sailor lads inside my saffron caves. That's pretty neat. I don't know who recorded that or who heard that or where that comes from. 
it may just be somebody made it up for a book or a tall tale or something, and it's been uh, reported on many different sites over and over again. Um, if that's the case, if this is just a little bit of nothing, which it probably is, I'll, I'll, I'll say it right here, uh, I still think it's awesome and still think it's so cool that uh, this, this storm hag has a neat like nursery rhyme song that goes along with her. I love that. So <laughs> I had, had to do this one, guys. I, I had to get it in there. Um, as I said before, I'm a huge fan of local legends. Anytime I'm traveling and I go to a new area, even if it's somewhere here in the U.S., even if it's, uh, you know, uh, two states over or a day trip, I always look for books about local legends and hauntings, uh, ghost stories and weird tall tales and stuff like that. And uh, over the years, I've built up a pretty nice collection, I have to say. Um, it's fun to look at the different oddities and the different, uh, you know, urban legends and local tales from different regions. I have books from Hawaii. I have books from, you know, Ohio. I have a book about haunted uh, national park trails, which is pretty interesting. So it's always cool. And it, it's fun to look at what uh, different areas of the country um, have in terms of, you know, ghosts and monsters and creatures like that. It's pretty cool stuff. Pittsburgh in Western Pennsylvania, I'm sure is not more legend rich than any other place, but I like the local legends that we have here. If you go to the Northern Pine Forest, or I'm sorry, Hemlock Forest of Pennsylvania, apparently you can find the Squonk, which is a bizarre potato-like creature that is constantly crying because it's so damned ugly, it makes it cry all the time. And if you try to approach it, if you're crying in the woods one night and you approach it because you're dumb and you don't, you know, you, you, if you're crying in the woods, I'm leaving. That's all there is to it. But if I, if you approach mystery crying in the woods, apparently you can sneak up on a squonk, but you got to be careful because he can turn his body into a pool of tears. So that's something we got here. Stories of Bigfoot abound. Uh, we've also got Joe Maganak, I think is how you pronounce his name. The toughest steel worker ever who could work 24 hours a day and like pour molten steel with his bare hands. And uh, pretty much every group of uh, immigrant steel workers claim that he was one of theirs, like the Polish, the Hungarians, the Czech. So neat stuff. All right, guys, let's take a look at the scan here once I get all these raindrops put in. All right, looking good. I definitely wanted to capture the storminess that the storm hag is bringing. And I gave her almost a siren-like body. It one's appealing, but uh, once you get close enough, you see that wicked face and the claws, and you realize that uh, you've made a mistake and your doom is coming. So this was a lot of fun, as always. Hey, drop me a line. Let's talk about the urban legends and tall tales and the folklore in your area, whether you're in a different part of the world or a different part of the country. I'd love to hear about it. Um, and that's it. Keep watching Draw Halloween. Thank you guys very much for tuning in as always, and we'll see you tomorrow for another great episode.